So when we've talked about BLAST, we've talked about comparing DNA to DNA, and we talked about comparing protein to protein, right? And I said, if you're comparing DNA to DNA, you, very, you usually have a very simple scoring matrix, maybe like plus one for a match, or and zero for a mismatch, or minus one for a mismatch, something like that. And when, it, when you have a protein to protein comparison, you have a more complex scoring matrix, you use something like BLOSM62 or something like that. But you guys know that we can compute from a DNA sequence to a protein sequence, right? You guys know how to do that. You've done it. So in fact, with BLAST, you're not limited to comparing DNA to protein, sorry, DNA to DNA or protein to protein. You can compare DNA to protein or protein to DNA. And so we have different types of BLAST search depending on what you're trying to do. So think about our database, and so this is our set of known sequences that we've collected. And for our database, we can either have a protein database, or we can have a DNA database. Yeah? And then think about our query sequence. So this is the sequence that we've generated and we're interested in searching against our database. And so for our query sequence, we can either have a DNA query or we can have a protein query, yeah? So if we're comparing a DNA query to a DNA database, the algorithm to do that is called BLAST-N, so BLAST nucleotide. And if we're comparing a protein query to a protein database, the algorithm to do that is called BLAST-P. If we have a DNA query and we want to compare it to a protein database, what that means is that we have to translate all six reading frames of our DNA query, right? Because we don't know which reading frame is the correct one. It could be any of the six. So we have to translate all six reading frames of our DNA query, and then we can compare all of those six reading frames to our protein database. That algorithm is called BLAST-X, but is obviously going to be much more computationally complex, right? Because for each of your pieces of your, your query, you're going to have six reading frames that you're going to have to compare against all of your database. Similarly, if we provide a protein query, what we could do is translate all of our database and say, in all of our database, in all six reading frames in our database, which one matches best to our protein query? And that algorithm is called TBLASTN. But generally speaking, our database is really big, right? And our protein query might not be so big, but what that means is that we're going to have to take our database and translate it into all six reading frames before we can compare it to our protein. So this is even slower. And then if we want to be really crazy, what we could say is we've got a DNA sequence and we want to compare it to a DNA sequence, or DNA database rather, but we think the best comparison is going to be in protein space. And so we can translate our query in all six reading frames, and we can translate our database in all six reading frames, and do all the pairwise combinations to find the best matches. And that algorithm is called TBLASTX. The reason that you want to do these different comparisons is that if you're doing DNA to DNA queries, you're going to be looking for very similar things. 
remember that DNA evolves a lot faster than protein does, okay? So we're going to be looking for similar organisms. If we move into protein space, either by just having a protein query, having a protein database, or translating our DNA queries or databases, we can look for more distant relationships. Because as the DNA evolves very quickly, the protein sequences under selective pressure doesn't change quite so fast, quite so quickly as the DNA sequence does. Yeah? Remember, we looked at an alignment and we had a DNA sequence. We had two DNA sequences that were very, very dissimilar. But when we translated them, they became the same protein sequence. That's because of this. So depending what you're searching for, depending on what you're looking for, you want to use one of these different algorithms. Sometimes you want to use BLASTM because you're looking for things that are really close. Or you want to do things that are really fast because using just nucleotide searches is much faster. Sometimes you can go to BLASTP because you've got a protein sequence that you want to identify the function of. Sometimes you just want to burn computers up just to stop the machines rising and taking over the world. So you can do two blast X. It doesn't work, by the way. It doesn't stop the machine. I mean, it works, but it doesn't stop the machines taking over the world. <laughs>